In this video, we're trying out the Logo Mini from Option Owl. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're going to continue to explore how different coffee grinders pair with our April brewers. In this video, we're using the Mini from Option O, so the Mini Logum from Option O. And this is a little bit of an interesting grinder that I first came across properly when traveling through Malaysia and more specifically Kuala Lumpur, where I saw a lot of the coffee shops actually using this to brew the pour overs with. So I was kind of interested in trying to actually see how does that pair up with the April Brewers. Now, a few small details about the grinders. It's a 38 millimeter burst set, which we see is kind of like the home standard almost now in terms of size. One of the things they're pitching here is that it goes well both for filter and espresso. And whenever I hear that, I know it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to brew the quality that I'm looking for in a pour over because usually when it comes to grinders that are supposed to be suitable for both, they have a very high amount of fines because that's how you control the flow rate with an espresso. So because the two brew methods are so different, it's hard to find a grinder that is kind of optimal for both. However, we're really excited to try it. Now, another observation on the grinder is that it doesn't really have a clear way to mark the different sizes in terms of grind size, right? So you have this kind of circle system with small and larger dots, which I find a little bit complicated, especially if you want to go back and forth different grinders or if you're several people trying to use that same grinder. In this case, what we've done is that we've done basically gone to zero, went one full lapse all the way around, and then almost back to zero. So we went four more kind of large dots. So we're almost two full circles from the zero of the dial. And this is basically where we find that the quality of that coffee comes out the best, right? Now, one of the things to think about when you're working with a grinder that is created for both filter and espresso is again, you're gonna have a lot of those smaller particles. So you're actually gonna have to go a little bit coarser to compensate for that. So don't worry so much about if the grounds you're getting are looking a little bit large because you're all gonna have those small particles. So now we're gonna push 13 grams of coffee through the grinder. It's definitely not the fastest grinders on the market, but it's also not the slowest. The coffee that we're using today is a washed processed geisha uh, from a farm called Esmeralda in Panama. It's one of our favorite kind of limited coffees and limited geishas that we have at the moment. I'm going to do this a classic 13 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water. And we're going to do this in two simple pours. Now the brew temperature is at 91 degrees Celsius which I find often is giving us a little bit of a cleaner more floral cup, especially when we're working with a more kind of delicate geisha varietal as this is. So we have a lot of florals, we have a lot of citrus, but we don't have a lot of that kind of ripe fruit character. So therefore I find it really helpful to just lower that temperature a little bit. We're gonna let this sit for 35 seconds and we're gonna do that second pour. And keep in mind that each pour that we're doing is gonna be within 10 seconds. So basically we're pouring 10 grams of water Per second. And the flow rate or the speed of how you're pouring that water is always going to be really important and that's something that you should be thinking about when you're brewing coffee at home as well. Now because of the distribution of the particle size with this grinder we're going to look for slightly longer brew times and that's because we have such a high amount of fines so the contact time almost regardless of grind size is going to be longer. Now, I don't necessarily find that being much of an issue in terms of taste, but we're definitely looking at a coffee that's going to have a little bit more body, a little bit more texture than if we compare it with some of the other kind of home grinders on the market. Now, another thing that's interesting with the grinder is the fact that we're looking at a price that is around $350-ish, right? Which kind of puts it in a category with some pretty steep competition 
in terms of flavor quality on any given grinder, right? Now, obviously, one of the things one can argue for this grinder is the fact that it's tiny. It's obviously a really small footprint, which at home in a kitchen is really kind of comfortable, I guess, and it integrates pretty well. With that, you can also take it with you when you travel, for example, if that's something you want to do, which I guess that's kind of what they're trying to do here, a compact grinder that could rival a hand grinder, maybe, but is electric, which makes it easier to use, right? Especially when you're running kind of any style of espresso brewing, right? That's when that hand grinder sometimes becomes a little bit exhausted, right? Now, what we're gonna do here is that we're just gonna let this go through, then we're gonna do a quick taste, do a little bit of an evaluation, and then we'll come right back to you and share the kind of final thoughts on how well this grinder pairs up with the April Brewer. So the total brew time that we got here was basically between 250 and three minutes, which we think is a fairly suitable brew time to look for, right? We don't wanna to go too fast, we don't wanna to go too slow based on the kind of grind quality that we're getting from this grinder. Now, in general, taste-wise, we're kind of saved here because the coffee we're using is really good. You have a lot of the florals, you had a lot of the kind of citrus complexity that we like in coffees. However, the flavors are definitely a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit muddy or muted, which is something that we found often working with this grinder. And for example, when we use the P100, so a larger model from Optional, we get very, very good grind quality and very good flavor clarity that comes with that as well, right? So it's fair to say that we should always keep in mind when it comes to different grinders, that the different price categories is gonna generate different quality in terms of taste of coffee, which I think is a pretty fair observation, right? Then it's kind of up to you what is the quality that you're looking for. I would say in this case, this grinder together with the April Brewer generates a cup with a slightly higher body, a little bit stronger, probably benefits you more if you're working with a roasted coffee that is more on the kind of medium side to a higher roast degree, versus these kind of really light, delicate um, kind of coffees, because then you probably need a slightly bigger burst set in a slightly different format to really get the most out of those coffees. But all in all, super kind of fun little grinder. It's easy to bring with you, small footprint at home. We've been having it here in the kind of roastery headquarters at April for quite some time and played around with it as well. So it is a fun little gadget to have, and we're thankful for the opportunity to kind of test it out as well. So. Overall, is this a good grinder in terms of using with April Brewer? Of course. Is it going to give you a little bit of heavier body structured coffee? Yes, we believe so. Is it suitable for espresso? We haven't tried, so we don't really know. Maybe you guys want us to do that in a future video, then you're more than welcome to kind of just comment below and ask us and we're happy to do it, right? So overall, it's a fun little grinder. Personally, from a taste quality perspective, i rather invest a little bit more to get that higher quality out of my coffee because I think that's what really is important. But for those of you that kind of don't want to spend that much, this is still quite a lot of money for a grinder, uh, then it's a great option just because it's kind of, again, small footprint, easy to use, not very complicated. I would like them to maybe change the dial so it's a little bit clearer. But overall, it's a pretty interesting grinder, right? So with that, as always, we want to thank you guys for watching. And if you have any recommendations on other grinders to try, uh, what are you using, for example, in terms of grinders with the April Brewers? We're always really interested in trying and hearing both in terms of feedback, but also inspiration in terms of what grinders to be using next. That being said, also don't forget about Patreon. That's where we share all the details Make sure you see our homebrewing videos as well, which is a fairly new concept here in April. And with all that in mind, we just wanna say thank you for watching and wish you a good day. We wanna give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you wanna see because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.